Today's video is brought to you by Vinyl Moon. Vinyl Moon is the all-in-one deluxe vinyl discovery. Every month they press awesome music on beautiful colored records and send them right to your door. Join today with discount code VINALIZE to get 10% off. All right, now today we're gonna to talk about the top five most common record player problems and how you can fix them. Hey friends, welcome back to Vinylize. I'm Jarrett New, and today we're talking about the most common turntable issues and what you can do to fix them. So before we dive in, today's song of the day is Uprising by Muse. Really cool track. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day, post it in the comments down below and you might see it in a future video. All right, so let's start off with number five. Your volume is too low. Now, there could be several reasons for this problem. For example, as I've said a bajillion times on this channel, you need a turntable, a preamp, an amplifier, and speakers to make all of this work properly. So let's say you only bought the turntable, you connected your headphones to the back of it somehow, and now you're wondering why it's so quiet. Well, the reason for that is that even if your turntable has a built-in preamp, you still need the amplifier to raise the volume to a normal level. Now, receivers are one type of amplifier, which work great with turntables, usually come with a headphone jack, and sometimes even have the preamp built in just in case your turntable didn't come with one. So these are all the reasons why I picked up the Yamaha RS-201. And although they've discontinued this model, the RS-202 is the exact same thing, only it also has Bluetooth. So you can also play music off your phone. So that's kind of cool. Now, another reason your volume might be too low could be that your preamp isn't actually turned on. So if you already have a turntable with a built-in preamp, and a receiver and bookshelf speakers and everything's properly connected, but you're still not hearing anything, look at the switch on the back of your turntable and make sure it's set to line. If it's set to phono, the built-in preamp is turned off. So that's something you definitely want to be aware of. And the last reason for a low volume could be something really simple that you might have overlooked, like making sure you're on the correct input of the receiver or making sure the RCA cables on the back aren't loose. Number four, bad ground connection. If you've ever heard this while setting up your turntable, then you've experienced this other very annoying problem. So if you wanna get rid of that annoying hum, you have to properly ground the turntable. And the best way to do this is to connect a ground wire, which is a little string of metal from the turntable to the ground connection on the back of your receiver, which looks like a little metal post. Now, if your turntable already comes with a built-in preamp, then you're totally good. It's already grounded, so you don't need to worry about this step. But if it doesn't come with a built-in preamp and you're using a separate one instead, you're gonna have to ground it with that wire. And that was my situation with the Fluence RT85. However, I also ran into a separate problem. Since my receiver doesn't actually have a ground connection in the back, I had to actually tape the ground wire to the FM radio antenna post instead. And since it's made of metal, the buzzing stops Stopped. So you could also try that as kind of a last resort. Now, speaking of getting the best sound out of your setup, if you're looking for some awesome records to play on your turntable, you should definitely check out our sponsor for this video, Vinyl Moon. Like I said, they send you a new record every month. And I particularly like this one, which is volume 44 called Choose a Side. In addition to all the awesome music on this release, we also get some really cool artwork by Cinta Vidal. No matter which way you turn this thing, it's always in the correct orientation. Also, since the record is completely sealed, the coolest feature is the fact that you get to choose the side that you want to open. And once you do that, you're treated to a cool poster and of course the record itself on clear vinyl. So overall, they're a cool company, they make a lot of awesome records, and if you want to check them out for yourself, 
Their link is down below. All right, now moving on to number three in our list of turntable problems is having a damaged stylus or record needle. And this is a problem you might run into if you've picked up an older, more vintage turntable. So when you buy a record player used from like a thrift shop or a garage sale or something like that, the turntable itself might be in good working order, but odds are the stylus will not be. And you're gonna need to swap it out with a new one or else risk damage damaging your records every time you play them, which would not be a good thing. So if you're getting an older turntable, replacing the cartridge or replacing both the cartridge and the head shell is always a good idea. And when you do that, make sure the lead wires from the head shell are firmly connected to the new cartridge. If they're loose, they might give you some audio problems. Also, when you're installing that new cartridge, make sure you align it properly for the best sound. If you wanna know how to do that, click this video right up here. Number two, clicks and pops. A lot of people think that records should sound clicky, poppy, and scratchy. These people are wrong. If you have the right gear and you care for your records, they should sound amazing. So if you are experiencing this other annoying problem of too many clicks and pops on your records, the first thing you want to do is make sure the records are clean. By cleaning them properly, most of those clicks and pops will just disappear. However, another factor could be static electricity building up on the surface of the record. So if you live in a very dry environment or at higher altitudes where static is an issue, you definitely need an anti-static brush like this one, and you might also want to consider the Milti Zero Stat 3, which basically annihilates static. It's really cool. So if you want to know more about this one, you can check out this video right up here. And finally, number one, your tracking force is too heavy. This is a big one that a lot of people overlook simply because it's not as obvious as the other problems that we've mentioned, but it's still very important when it comes to keeping your records in good shape. Now the term tracking force basically just means the weight of the record needle pressing down into the grooves. If it's over 3.5 grams, it's too heavy and it's gonna carve up those grooves like a hot knife through butter, not good but if it's under 3.5 grams, it's usually safe. So if you wanna check the status of yours, pick up one of these little digital gram scales, lower your stylus right on top, and then it's gonna tell you exactly how light or heavy your tracking force is down to the 10th of a gram. And once you know what that number is, you can adjust your counterweight accordingly. So if you do that, your records will thank you and they're gonna sound great for many years to come. Now, what problems have you run into to when trying to set up your turntable. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you love vinyl records but still haven't subscribed yet, smash this red button right here and hit the little bell so you won't miss out on the new videos. And most importantly of all friends, have a fantastic day and keep spinning that vinyl.